Ignite your faith. I'm on a series and you don't want to miss it. This is part two. Come right back. Ignite your faith. Hebrews chapter 11 tells us so much about igniting our faith. And so if you go to the first verse, it says, Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Many of us get discouraged because we're being hopeful for something and we don't see it come to pass. Well, I'm the messenger here to tell you to keep hoping. Keep praying and keep believing because Jesus is still hearing your prayer. God is still on the throne, my friend. And with God, all things are possible. By faith, Abel offered God a better sacrifice than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as a righteous man. When God spoke well of his offerings and by faith, he still speaks even though he is dead. So we see God is showing us in Scripture. Abel, the reason why he's commended is because he had faith. Cain didn't. So God is showing us that it wasn't so much that Abel had given him an amazing offering, although that was important. Abel gave God an offering in the Old Testament, in the book of Genesis. And God was pleased with the offering. Do you know when we give God offerings, when he moves on our heart, and we feel the Holy Spirit saying to give and we do it? Do you know in many places in Scripture, it's, it says it's a pleasing aroma to heaven, to God? So when God moves on your heart to give to, for his kingdom, you need to give. But we see Abel, Cain and Abel, Two brothers. You know, sometimes in families there's a lot of jealousy and competition between siblings. Well, Abel and Cain, evidently, we see Cain was jealous of Abel. He shouldn't have been. I mean, Cain had the ability to do exactly what his brother did, and that was to hear from God and, do, and be obedient Cain had the same ability to do what Abel did. But instead of adjusting his life and saying, Okay, God, I'm yours. God, I'm going to give you whatever you want. Lord, I'm going to obey you. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to walk with you. Instead of Cain doing that, he watched his, his brother. And he was jealous. Because God looked down and he saw Abel's heart, his purity, his faithfulness. And Cain was jealous. And unfortunately, Cain was so jealous that he killed his brother. But God saw the whole thing. And Cain was casted out. And to this day, we see God admonishing Abel's giving, his faithfulness. Why did Abel offer God a better sacrifice than Cain did? We don't know. But he did. Was it a different type of offering than maybe that Cain gave? Evidently it was because God points it out. Abel offered his first portion to God. He gave it to God. Giving God our first portion is talked about in Scripture. Bring your burnt offerings and sacrifices, your tithes and your special gifts what you have vowed to give and your free will offerings and the firstborn of your herds and flocks. Giving was God's idea. God doesn't give us like an exact rule about giving. He doesn't give us a formula for giving. So I'm not going to try to give you a formula since God didn't, but the, 
God, what God does tell us is to be a giver and be a cheerful giver. And God wants us to give to his kingdom, to further his gospel. It was important to God. In Deuteronomy 18, you are to give them the first fruits of your grain, new wine and olive oil, and the first wool of the shearing of your sheep. But what God does show us throughout all of Scripture is we should have a heart to give. Give with your talents. Give with your gifts. Give whatever God tells you to in your heart. If he tells you to give something, give it. I won't even mention some of the things that God has asked me to give because they're very special to my heart. And it's things that I could say was probably my most favorite things other than my children. And God asked me to give them up and give them to his kingdom, and I did it. And I'm not saying that to you to brag. I'm saying that to say I want to encourage you. I want to ignite your faith to say if God is telling you to do something, maybe it's to go bless your neighbor. Maybe God is telling you to go buy groceries for somebody. Maybe God wants you to give to this ministry or another ministry. I don't know what God's telling you to do. Maybe you're supposed to use the gifts and talents God has put in you to go and bless someone and do something for free. Whatever it is God tells you to do, you're going to be blessed when you do it. You see, that's what God is showing us here in Hebrews chapter 11 about Cain and Abel. God saw what Abel did, and he sees your faithfulness. When God moves on your heart and tells you to do something, God sees it. When you obey him, don't second guess it. When God tells you to give, just do it. And give cheerfully. Give God your first and your best. Bring the best of your first fruits of your soil to the house of the Lord your God. In the Old Testament, they were instructed to bring first fruits to the temple, to give to the Lord. Listen, you cannot outgive the Lord. I believe that with all my heart. As soon as the order went out, the Israelites generously gave the first fruits of their grain, their new wine, olive oil, honey, and all that the fields produced. They brought a great amount, amount a tithe of everything. That means a tithe is a 10%. The people of Israel and Judah who lived in the towns of Judah also brought a tithe of their herds and flocks and a tithe of the holy things dedicated to the Lord their God. And they piled them in heaps. They began doing this in the third month and finished in the seventh. When Hezekiah and his officials came and saw the heaps, they praised the Lord and blessed his people Israel. Hezekiah asked the priests and Levites about the heaps. And Isaiah, the chief priest from the family of Zadok, and he answered, Since the people began to bring their contributions to the temple of the Lord... We've had enough to eat and plenty to spare because the Lord has blessed his people and this great amount is left over. So demonstrate your faith to God by giving. It's not an exact amount. It's giving out of your heart, out of the abundance of your heart. Whatever God tells you to do, then you do it. In Proverbs 3, it says, Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops, then your barns will be filled to overflowing, and your vats will brim over with new wine. So once again, God is showing us, give, be a giver, and God will see it, and you're going to be blessed. In Matthew, it says in Matthew chapter 6, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So where's your treasure? If your treasure is focused on God and his kingdom and helping other people, then you're going to want to give. It's an overflow of your love for Jesus. I've had people, I can say, gave to me at a time when I was desperate and I needed food back when I was younger. I've had that happen. I've had times when I've been able to give to other people and I've been able to bless in overflow. And I've had people give to this ministry and helped us when we needed it. Listen, God sees that. God sees all of it. And then, you know, we don't desire to be wealthy for riches just to get riches. You know, we can be blessed financially and we can be a giver with that blessing. 
That's why scripture says you can't serve one, you can't serve two masters. You either will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. What does that mean? It means you can't serve money and riches and be self-centered and just have all your mind about wealth and all your mind about greed. No, God is saying, I'm going to bless those that bless my kingdom. So be a cheerful giver. God is the source of all your blessings anyway, right? Everything you have, God is the source of it. When you, can, when you receive Jesus and you acknowledge that he's your Savior and God is your ultimate source of everything, God is the source of your blessings and your overflow. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like sifting shadows. Recognize that God is the owner of everything you have. Now, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations you will be my treasured possession. Although the whole earth is mine, God says. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it anyway. The whole world and all who live in it. It belongs to God. Trust God's promises to provide for all your needs. And my God will meet all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. You know, more than anything else, you can give to God financially. You can give to God your gifts and your talents. But more than anything else, do you know God sees your faith? And that is what God is trying to say right here about Cain and Abel. Yes, Abel gave abundantly to God. But the bottom line is what God is trying to say right here in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4. He's saying, more than giving to me and obeying me, Abel had faith. He had faith in God and he was generous. How do you practice giving God the first portion today in your life? Give God the first and the best of your life. Not just your finances. I just wanted to share with you some partners that are writing into the ministry and some of them are requesting prayer and others are donating into the ministry to help us take God's word around the world. This is Kathy Lee from Grovetown, Georgia. And Kathy Lee, thank you so much. God bless you. Um, we're going to be sending you what you requested and thank you for the donation and for the red mug. And we're so excited to partner with you. And we praise God. Thank you for all the sweet, wonderful things that you said about the ministry. Partners, we love you. Write in. We want to hear your prayer request. We thank you for giving and for the prayer request. And we're just here to believe with you for what God has put in your heart. And remember, with God, all things are possible for you, my friend. We're believing with you. I want to pray with you. Lord, I pray for the partners that are writing in, sending prayer requests who are sending donations and giving to their ministry. Lord, I pray you bless them. And Lord, we pray for those that are writing in. Lord, we pray for Kathy Lee that wrote in, Lord. I pray a blessing on her life, Lord. And for every single person that's listening, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Second Corinthians says, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. So if you want to be blessed, be a blessing. One of the greatest blessings you can receive is saying, God saying and looking down at you and saying, Marla, you were faithful, just like Abel. You were faithful, you obeyed, and you did what I told you to do. Scripture says, a generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. Command those who are rich in the present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. In this way, they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. So God is saying, just be generous with your time, with your effort. 
You give generously. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And that's the bottom line. We are not here to please people and serve people just to serve people. We are here to say, God, I'm here at your command. I'm not going to be over here in the world serving the world and living for the world. Lord, God, I'm going to have a purpose for your kingdom. I'm going to live for you. I'm going to do all I can to be faithful to you. And we see Enoch. God commends him for being faithful. Enoch was faithful. When Enoch had lived 65 years, he became the father of Methuselah. After he became the father of Methuselah, Enoch walked faithfully with God for 300 years. And he had other sons and daughters. Altogether, Enoch lived a total of 365 years. Enoch walked faithfully with God, and then he was no more because God took him away. So my friend, I want to encourage you, ignite your faith like Enoch. God saw Enoch's faith. Enoch walked faithfully with God and he lived a long life. You might be thinking, well, I can't live 365 years. No, we can't today. We can't, that is true. But you can live the life that God has given you, however long that life is. Our days are numbered. We can live our life as long as we live it faithfully before God. Another person that God acknowledged as faithful was Elijah. Not only Enoch was taken up to heaven, wouldn't that be amazing? I mean, Lord, if you want to take me that way when I get old, Lord, that would be amazing. Enoch went up to heaven like that, but so did Elijah. We see when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way to, from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, stay here. The Lord has sent me to Bethel. But Elisha said, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of the prophets at Bethel came out to Elisha and asked, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Isn't that amazing? That God was even letting them know it was time for Elijah to go. Yes, I know, Elisha replied, so be quiet. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, Elisha, the Lord has sent me to Jericho. And Elisha replied, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went to Jericho. So the two of them went to Jordan. Fifty men from the company of prophets went and stood at the distance, facing the place where Elijah and Elisha had stopped at the Jordan. Elijah took his cloak and he rolled it up. He struck it, the water with it. The water divided to the right and to the left, and the two of them crossed on over on dry ground. Now we think of when Moses was at the water and he needed to cross over the Red Sea and God parted the water, but guess what? God parted the water for Elijah and Elisha to cross over the Jordan. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me, what can I do for you before I'm taken up for the Lord? And Elisha said, Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit. You've asked a difficult thing, Elijah said, Yet if you see me when I'm taken from you, it will be yours. Otherwise it won't. Well, the rest of that story is Elijah was taken up in a whirlwind up to heaven. And Elisha saw it happen. And God was faithful. Not only did Elijah get to face the benefits of being faithful on earth, but here Elisha got the double portion. You know, my friend, if you want a double portion blessing, the key to a double portion blessing is to be faithful to God. Be faithful to God. You know, we're going to face a being caught up in a second coming, in a rapture when Jesus comes. Jesus is going to come, a second coming. He's going to come, and he's going to take the ones that are ready. We're going to be caught up in an instant. We don't know the time, the date, or the hour of when Jesus will return, but I can, be assur I can assure you, according to Scripture in Revelation, 
Jesus is coming again. We need to ignite our faith to believe the same way that Elisha and Enoch went up to heaven. Jesus is going to come and he's going to take the saints. He's going to take the ones that are faithful and trusting in him. Are you ready? Are you ready to be caught up in the rapture when Jesus returns? Faith means that we believe in what God says. We who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. We have a rapture. We have, we're going to be caught up together. That's what that means. It says in 1 Thessalonians 4.17, and Re Revelation talks about it. We're going to be caught up. Are you ready? Listen to God's warnings and don't second guess what he's saying because it's a very serious matter and respond to the warnings of God. It's meant for your good. These scriptures I'm giving you, it's all God breathe. All of scriptures God breathe. It is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. It's to give you faith. It's to ignite your faith. It's to say, listen, if God did that for Abel and saw his faithfulness, if God took Enoch and Elijah up into heaven, whatever you see in Scripture, God is saying, I'm igniting that in your life. It's faith. These are faith-filled words right here. It's for you, my friend. Will you receive it? Hebrews chapter 11 is the faith that gives us, it builds up our faith, ignites your faith in, in Hebrews chapter 11. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, it says, And without faith it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. What is a reward? What is your reward? Think about it. God is going to reward those that earnestly seek him. We're a reward. What would be an award, reward to you? For me, it would be all my kids being saved. A reward for me would be taking God's word with what God has given me around the world like I am now and for that to increase and touch people's lives. What is your reward? God will give you rewards when you follow him with all your heart and you trust in him. God is going to do the impossible in your life. It's amazing to think about all the things God did in Scripture. You think of Noah. Noah, we see he was also commended. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. And by faith, he condemned the world and became an heir of righteousness that comes by faith. When God told Noah to build the ark, it didn't even look like there was going to be a flood. But you know what? Noah said, God, if you tell me to build the ark, if there's no rain today, if there's no rain tomorrow, and maybe he built this ark, some scholar says, it took him over 100 years. Can you imagine Mrs. Noah saying to her husband and encourage him and saying, Are, you know what, Noah, if God is telling you to do it, let's do it. You see, we need to be equally yoked and say, you know what, build each other up, your husband and your wife, and say, if God's told you to do it, let's do it. Noah worked on that ark every single day. People would go by and mock him, make fun of him, and call him crazy. Noah didn't care. He was faithful to God. If God tells you to do it, then do it. And right here in Hebrews chapter 11, we see Noah is commended for his faithfulness. Noah built that ark, and at the perfect timing, God sends a flood to cover the whole earth. But you know what the reward was for Noah? Noah got a reward that he, his wife, and all of his children were saved from the flood. God will reward those who earnestly seek him. It's part of the outcome of trusting and obeying God. You will be rewarded. This is igniting my faith. I hope it's igniting yours. Let's close in prayer. Father, ignite our faith. Lord Jesus, ignite our faith in you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for showing us able Elijah, Elisha, Noah. Thank you, Lord, for showing us all these people. And you commend them for their faith. Lord, help us be more faithful and walk in your ways and obey you. God, we love you, we praise you, and we thank you for all you've done for us in Jesus' name.
Listen, my friend, I want to hear from you. Send me a letter, call in. We want to hear from you. And listen, I have something for you. With any donation, I have a gift for you. I want to give you because it's so special. I have the little Jesus. He goes with me wherever I go. My little Jesus is in my car as a reminder to me that Jesus is with me wherever I go. He is with us. And I have a necklace, a faith necklace. It has a mustard seed with a mountain. Because Jesus said, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, and you say to this mountain, move from here to there, guess what? The mountain will move. So if you want these two special gifts with any donation, call or write in, and we're going to get that to you, my friend. Thank you for watching, my friend. We'll see you soon. Hello, everybody. I have a special box that has come to me from Israel. I'm so excited. I'm going to open my box with you to show you what's inside. I have this amazing lotion. Look at this. I'm so excited. It's called Nahara from the Jordan River. And I am telling you, this lotion whoops, smells so good. And I want to get this to you, my friends. I want you to have one of these lotions. It's, it's so soft and refreshing, and the scent is very soft. It smells like something that would come from the Mediterranean. It has a part of the Jordan River in it. When you get this, you're blessing Israel. And I have not only this, but I have a special journal I want to get to you. And this is a journal that's called, it says on the top, Possible, Broken Becomes Beautiful. And this is a journal with scriptures in it, and it's going to have places for you to write. It has some pictures of me in different places in the world. And so I want to get this to you. And my final gift I have for you, this wonderful hat. I love hats. My theme verse that God has for this ministry and for you is with God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. For a $50 donation to the ministry, you'll get all three items. You're blessing Israel. Then you're wearing scripture. You can tell people what possible means. You've got the wonderful scent and a journal with scripture in it. You can take the journal with you wherever you go. For a $50 donation to the ministry, we use that donation to take God's word around the world. It's a purpose for us to be able to use it to help people. People are getting saved in this ministry. People are turning broken hearts are being healed. We're seeing things happen all over the world. Call us, go online, and be a part of what we're doing for the kingdom. And remember, in your life with God, all things are possible for you. God bless you, my friend.